My name is Hannah, and this is my beauty budget. So this is a duping the vibes video, which means I made an eye look on my eyes that I could have made using the Natasha Denona Gold Palette, but I didn't actually use the Gold Palette. Instead, I duped its vibes using other eyeshadows in my collection. And I did it to illustrate to you guys that as beautiful as the Gold Palette is, and as much as I enjoy using it, nobody needs it to get dynamic, textural, blue and gold eye looks. So in the meat of the video, I'm going to show you how I got this very, very gold palette look without actually using the gold palette. But first, speaking of gold, are you staring at my earrings? Have you already paused the video to leave a comment about these earrings? I am so delighted to be able to say that this video is sponsored by Ana Luisa Jewelry. And this is one of the three pairs of heart-stoppingly beautiful gold earrings that they sent over for me to wear. Ana Luisa is a cool company. They pride themselves on ethical production processes, which I love, and they're also an independent direct-to-consumer brand. So they sell online, no marketers, no middlemen, and that allows them to offer what is essentially luxury jewelry, but without the traditional retail markup. So when I tested out the earrings and I saw the amazing quality of the jewelry and I learned about the ethical infrastructure of the brand, I was so excited that Ana Luisa wanted to work with me. I love all three pairs of earrings that they sent. They are handcrafted, they are modern art inspired, they are gold plated, and apparently Ana Luisa hires jewelry designers who used to work for really big fashion houses like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, which is probably why the designs are so impeccably well balanced. You can really tell the quality of the designs. They also don't irritate my sensitive ears at all, which is super important to me. I love all three pairs, but I think the hoops are my favorite. I've been wearing the hoops almost nonstop since they arrived at my studio in their beautiful packaging. I feel like these statement hoops are the perfect balance of editorial and everyday. If you are on a no-buy right now, please remember that nothing is worth breaking your no-buy. Not even beautiful earrings. Not even beautiful earrings from an ethical, independently owned brand. However, whether you're on a no-buy or a low-buy or a budget, I feel like Ana Luisa is a good brand to know about in general. For example, for me, when it's time to buy birthday presents for my cousins this year, I'm going to be so much happier buying them from Ana Luisa than I would be buying them from a big box store or from a mega corporation. But I hope that neither one of my cousins is watching this video right now. But Bryn, Mara, if you're watching, check out the Ana Luisa website and tell me what you want for your birthday. I will obviously leave the link to the website in the description box down below. And the team at Ana Luisa gave me a discount code, which I've never had before for anything. It's not an affiliate code, it's just a discount. You guys know that I never recommend buying something because it is on sale or because you have a code. That's not a good reason to buy something. But if you are in the market for some very, very, very beautiful jewelry and it's in your budget, the code is there and it will knock $10 off of your order. Okay, that's it. Let me know if you have questions about the earrings. I've been wearing all three pairs for several days now and I love them all. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Hi, okay, let's start. As you can tell, I already have a little bit of product on my face. I'm wearing some concealer to even out my complexion and I have a little bit of product in my brows. When I'm duping the vibes of a palette, I'm usually looking at the palette online and I'm saying, if I had this palette before me, what would I do first? I actually have the gold palette here before me, so we're going to look into it and I'm going to tell you what I usually do first, which is to reach into one of the mattes. This is when I'm creating like a full eye look. I frequently reach into the bronzy shimmers for a single shadow all over the lid eye look, but we're doing something a bit more complex than that today. So these are the mattes. There are these browns, different tones of sort of mid-tone brown, there's a dark brown, and then there's this mustardy shade. So for today's look, I'm going to say that I would be reaching into that mustard shade. That's the matte that I reach into the most. 
because it's the most unique matte in this palette and I find it inspiring, frankly. I really like this color. I have two matte shadows in my collection that have really similar vibes to this shadow from the Natasha Denona Gold palette, and they're right here in this little palette. Here on this side is a mustardy brown that's from the Morphe 35O palette that I depotted a long time ago, and then here next to it is ColourPop Paper Tiger. So you can see that Paper Tiger, which is this one right here, is more yellow, and the one from the Morphe 35O palette is more brown, and then the one from the Natasha Denona palette is kind of in the middle. So I can use these two shadows to really get a close approximation of the vibes of this shadow. When it's buffed out on the lids, this eyeshadow from the Morphe 35O palette is particularly similar in its vibes to the one from the Natasha Denona palette. So I'm gonna start with this one and then maybe add a little bit of Paper Tiger in there just to brighten it up. I usually zoom in when I do eye looks but I'm not going to zoom in today I feel like this video is more about what I choose to do which shadows I choose to use than it is a demonstration of how to create a look so I'm gonna stay back here I also want to be holding up shadows and kind of showing you stuff all the time and I don't want to be zooming in zooming out zooming in zooming out so I'm going to show and tell what I'm doing and then kind of zoom through the parts where I'm actually applying this stuff to the eyes This is pretty much what my eyes always look like when I start building a look with the gold palette. I almost always go in with that mustard shade. I almost always use the mustard shade layered on top of itself to deepen up the crease a little bit. And that's what I did here. I went in with the slightly more brown Morphe shadow and then I used Paper Tiger to add some mustardy intensity to the crease. And Paper Tiger really does build well on itself. I love ColourPop mattes. ColourPop makes my favorite matte formula, I have to say. So it was a pleasure working with this bright mustardy matte. So when it comes to a lid shade, this palette really shines. There are so many amazing textures in this palette. Two of my favorites are this one up here and then this one down here. I think that it's this one down here that I might reach for next because it's more dense. This one's more of a topper lime chrome up here that's getting a lot of attention on social media that's more of a topper but this one here I think it's the one called brass it's a really thick luscious opaque glimmery glittery lid shade so my vision of this look something that I would absolutely do next would be to go into this shade and pack it pretty much all over my lid from the inner corner almost all the way to the outer corner as it so happens, I do have an eyeshadow in my collection that performs pretty similarly to this eyeshadow from the Natasha Denona palette, and it's here in the Alamar palette. I'm going to swatch it on this finger right next to Brass. It's this one from the upper corner of this palette. So this one right here is from the Alamar palette, and this one right here is from the Natasha Denona palette. There's Alamar. Natasha Denona. So you can see that the Alamar palette it's a little more of a green gold whereas brass is a little more of a warm gold but just in terms of the effect the intensity and that kind of gooey layered almost flaky quality they are they are similar they have similar vibes. And honestly, when it comes to duping the vibes, it's more about finding eyeshadows in your own collection that have the vibes of the palette that you are duping. So even though this eyeshadow isn't an exact dupe for any of the shadows in this palette, it has a strong gold palette vibe. So I think it's the perfect choice for an all over lid shade. I'm going to go ahead and pack it onto both my eyelids with my fingers. I don't know how well you can see it from there. I will definitely zoom in at the end so you can see everything close up, but 
that eyeshadow from the Alamar palette is just so creamy and foiled on the lid. It goes on like a paint. So to deepen up the outer corner, gold palette style, I just need a dark brown eyeshadow. And I'm going to use the dark brown eyeshadow in this NARS palette and just kind of deepen up the look, smoke it out a little bit, maybe darken the crease a little bit, outer corner, etc, etc. You know the drill. The brown from this palette is reading kind of blacker than I had hoped. It's a little bit more cool tone than I had hoped. So I'm actually going to use some of this brown cafecito from the Alamar palette to continue on. Okay, so there's the look smoked out. I did get some fallout on my cheeks and I brushed it away. It is going to need some more cleanup, but I'll do that when I'm finished with the eye look. I'm gonna do some work on the lower lash line before I return to the lids and finish them up. I love the idea of using these blues, these kind of Prussian blues, to smoke out the lower lash line with a pop of color, maybe even more than a pop of color, a color statement on the lower lash line. These blues and maybe even a little bit of that iridescent limey green gold color, these three in the upper corner are kind of what I'm aiming for for the lower lash line. But I'm going to pull those colors from elsewhere in my eyeshadow collection. It did occur to me that the blues in the Alamar palette are absolutely spot on for the blues in the gold palette. I mean, you can do so many gold palette vibe duping looks using this, 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 and this eyeshadow, four out of the eight that are in here. This is a really good little palette to have on hand if you're interested in the kind of looks that one would create with the gold palette. But I don't wanna just use this palette, so I'm going to use a blue from a different palette. My trusty Urban Decay Electric palette, source of all color and also the palette for which I shopped my stash this month. I'm going to dip into this greeny looking shadow up here in the corner. So that's a pretty thick, bright, smoked out line of color on the lower lash line. I'm gonna go ahead and dip back into Cafecito from the Alamar palette, just to darken it up a bit, make it a little bit more grungy. All right, that is definitely the grunge I was looking for. But I also wanna go in with some texture. So I'm thinking about what I can use that will give a similar effect to Lime Chrome, this really amazing eyeshadow that's in the upper left-hand corner of the Natasha Genona palette. And I pulled out Tea Garden, the ColourPop single. It's this one right here. They are actually really quite similar. So there's Lime Chrome and there's Tea Garden. Lime Chrome is a bit brighter and maybe has a bit more of the green, whereas Tea Garden has a bit more of that burgundy undertone. But for this purpose, for smudging out the lower lash line, a lower lash line that already has significant layers of other colors of eyeshadow on it, just as kind of a topper shade to roughen it up and make it more iridescent and textured, they perform the same, they, they do the same thing. For all intents and purposes, they work the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with Tea Garden on my lower lash line. So Tea Garden definitely acted as kind of a transformer shade for that rich blue shadow from the Urban Decay Electric palette. It made everything on the lower lash line feel less graphic, more grungy, a little more blended, definitely more textured, more layered 
more Natasha Denona and more my style. I really, really love what layering those two shadows did for the lower lash line. And of course, there's a little bit of brown in there as well to define the eye. So I'm gonna leave that on the lower lash line, but before I go in with some liner and some mascara, I'm going to return to my lids. One of my favorite things to do with the gold palette is to go in with one of these toppers you can use them anyway, but I kind of think of them as toppers. These sort of sheer, shimmery, glittery toppers is essentially what they are. They're really, really shockingly bright and glimmery and glittery. And ordinarily with a look like this, I would take one of those toppers, maybe this one, and pat it on the center of my lid to wed the shocking metallic together with the matte that's in the outer corner smoking out the eye. So I would kind of have this little area in the middle where I'm blending those two things together with glitter, essentially. But I'm not going to use one of these shadows, I'm gonna use something else. And in fact, instead of reaching for another eyeshadow, although I do have some glitter eyeshadows that I think would serve in that role, I'm gonna go in with a Stila glitter. And I specifically wanted to make the point with this product that if you have a Stila Glitter and Glow, or even if you have an Urban Decay glitter liner or any kind of glitter liquid, I mean, this kind of product has become very popular. This is texture. This is amazing on the lids. This is high impact. So if you've been drawn into the idea of buying a Natasha Denona palette with the promise of its total uniqueness, because of its textural formulas. Just remember, you can get texture in other ways. You don't have to buy Natasha Denona eyeshadows to make a look that's exciting and dimensional. So I'm gonna make this look more textured and more dimensional by patting some of this from my finger onto the center of my lids the same way that I would do with one of those unique Natasha Denona shadows. That has really amped up the look. It has made it more glittery, higher impact, and it has really made me feel like it's got that wow factor, that bam factor, that I often feel I have after I've layered on one of those glittery toppers from the gold palette. I'm gonna go ahead and just blend the edges of that Stila glitter with some of the brown again because it's gotten a bit lost. And now I'm gonna go in with some liner on my waterline and a bunch of layers of mascara. I'm gonna do that off camera. I will be right back. All right, there's the look with liner and lashes on. I actually went in with a navy blue eyeliner on my waterline and I love what it did for the look. I feel like it's very, very gold palette. And I went in with a black liner on my tight line and then a bunch of black mascara, lots and lots of layers. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can see how it looks like this. And then I'm gonna do the rest of my face and that will be it. I feel like it's a look that has all the hallmarks of the Natasha Denona Gold palette. And it's not just the colors, it's also the textures, and it's also the styling, the kind of smeary, grungy, editorial, layered look that I often get when I reach for that palette. I don't wanna to do too much on the rest of my face. I really want to let the eye look, and also honestly the earrings, shine. I think I'm just going to, oh, you know what I'm gonna put on my cheeks? This just came in the mail today from Octoly. I saw this in my free store and I requested it and Becca sent it to me. It's the pig one. So this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Year of the Pig. It's the limited edition pink pig highlighter. Well, that is really interesting. I really like it. But the reason that I like it is that it's giving me a soft glow. It's sort of like a soft candlelight glow that's pearlier than I expected. I have a feeling I'm gonna be reaching for this a lot. I thought that this was going to be kind of my token Becca highlighter that would sit in my drawer and that I would reach for when I really wanted to glow. But I kind of feel like reaching for this 
as a daily highlighter right now because I feel like it's right in line with my vibes lately. That's so interesting. That's a pleasant surprise. And that's just this Givenchy lip liner on my lips. It's shade number nine. So that is the finished look. I don't think I'm gonna go in with any sculpting cheek products or any blush or anything. I think I'm just gonna let the eyes and the earrings and possibly the lips do the talking. I hope this was helpful to some of you out there who maybe have been lusting after the Natasha Denona Gold Palette, but unable to buy it either because you are on a no buy or a low buy or because it's out of your price range. And I hope it was clear from the way that I shot this video that the point is not for you to recreate this look with the eyeshadows that you have. The point is for you to look at pictures of the gold palette and create the looks that you would be creating with the gold palette with the eyeshadows that you already have. I was just trying to give you a template for that behavior rather than to demonstrate a specific gold palette look because there are so many looks that you could create with the gold palette and the ones that you would create with it, that's what's exciting to you. I mean, that's what's exciting to me about you duping the vibes of that palette because it can be inspirational without it being purchased. Do leave me a comment down below. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of the video and the look and the earrings. And of course, I will put the discount code and the link to the Ana Luisa website in my description box so that you can check out the jewelry if you so choose. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you will remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.